Effect, where we explore security through strategy and game theory. Today, we enter strategy number eight, cyber threat intelligence as the SOC's radar. In the SOC, every day feels like standing on the deck of a ship in a storm. Alerts, logs, and false positives crash over us like endless waves. Without context, it's just noise, and noise will sink you. Cyber threat intelligence is the radar. It shows what's ahead, who is behind it, and how they move. And here is the truth. Attackers already share tools, tips, and playbooks in underground forms. They collaborate. If they work as a community, why should we fight blind? One alert at a time? Cyber Threat Intelligence, CTI, isn't just about collecting indicators like IP addresses or file hashes. Those are the basics, the starting point. But if that's all we use, we miss the bigger picture. Mitre is clear on this. True CTI must bring context, who is behind the attack, what are they after, and how are their tactics changing over time. For a SOC, that means three things. First, you need multiple sources of intelligence, commercial feeds, open source reporting, and communities like ASACs. Second, you must connect that intelligence to your own environment, mapping external data against your logs, your telemetry, your detections. And third, CTI can't stay trapped inside the SOC. The real value comes when you share validated intelligence with trusted partners. That's how defense grow stronger across the whole community. But here is the trap, what I call feed fatigue. Drawing analysts in endless unverified indicators doesn't make them smarter. It makes them slower. A world-class associate doesn't measure success by how many feeds it buys. It measures success by the quality of insight those feeds deliver. Think of this as a repeated game with incomplete information. On one side, the adversary, on the other side, the SOC. Attackers choose reuse the same infrastructure, switch to new techniques, or hide their activity with deception. Defenders choose act on intelligence, ignore it, or apply it poorly. The payoffs are clear. Act on good intelligence, and you reduce incident costs, contain threats faster, and stay ahead. Act on bad or noisy intelligence, and your analysts waste hours chasing false alarms. That wasted effort is a hidden tax. Now, picture it as a Stackberg game, where one player commits to a strategy first. If a SOC commits to an intelligence-driven defense, attackers are forced to adopt at higher cost. They must burn resources, build new infrastructure, invent fresh techniques just to keep pace. That's the power of the CTI. It shifts the balance. Instead of defenders reaching blind, intelligence reduced, uncertainty and titled the game in our favor. So, how do we turn this into practice? First, integrate CTI directly into detection engineering. Feed it into your SIEM and SOAR. 
build it into roles, dashboards, and playbooks. If intelligence never reaches your detection, it's just reading material. Second, use frameworks like Mitra Attack to translate raw intelligence into real defensive coverage. Attacks is the bridge between what the adversary is doing and how your SOC can detect and respond. Third, treat CTI as a shared comments. One SOC's incident report is another SOC's early warning. The organizations that share validated intelligence are the ones that lower risk for everyone. And for every analyst, there is one key question. Does this change my detection or response plan today? If the answer is no, then it's trivia. And trivia doesn't stop an attack. Attackers already collaborate in underground forums, marketplaces, and telegram groups. They share tools, tactics, and lessons learned. If we, as a defenders, hoard intelligence or treat it as a checkbox exercise, we lose the game before it even starts. So, the real question is this. In your SOC, are you navigating with radar or still relying on eyesight in the dark? Until next time, stay safe and stay secure. We rise together, stronger each move, lessons learned with nothing to prove, voices unite.